we go, losing self-control. Hello and welcome back. We do have another operator that we will talk about in the general list and that is the spline operator. And the spline operator is very cool. It deals with splines and the best way to understand the spline operator is to see it in action. So let's do that. Let me grab one of these spline objects. Let's say the flower. Let me put this flower into Expresso. Let me extract the object. And let's connect it to the object in this spline operator. Now we are dealing with this flower and using the spline operator, we will read out some great and valuable information about this flower object, like the position along the spline. So the position is uh, gonna read out a vector value. So I'm not gonna add a result value to see this in action, but I will add an object. Let's say a sphere, and let's make the sphere very, very, very small. And let's go to the basic tab and give it a color. Maybe this nice color, just to see it better. Let's go to the flower spline and give it a color too, just to see it better. And uh, bam, do have these nice colors on our viewport. All right, so let's grab the sphere and just put it into Expresso, extract the position of that sphere and let's connect it. Now notice that it takes the center as its original position. Now once we connect the position of the spline to the position of the sphere, notice what will happen to the sphere. It jumped to the spline. So now the position of the sphere is taking the position of the spline. When we go back to the spline operator, we do have this offset value, which we can increase through the attributes manager, of course. It's available right here. So when we increase this value, watch what happened to the sphere. It will travel along the spline until it reaches the end. So from zero, it's the in the beginning, and 100, it's in the end, which is in the same place. So this is one good use of the spline operator. The other things that we can read out from the spline operator is the closed, and it's a Boolean value, and it's gonna read out and tell us whether it, the spline is closed or open. Now, in our case, this flower spline is closed. So when we add a result operator, change the data type to Boolean, and then connect that to the closed output port, it's gonna give us a value of true because indeed this spline is closed. Other thing that we need to address is the length now it's a real value and it's gonna read out the actual length of this spline. So let me add a result node. And uh, just for the data type, let's just keep it real and uh, let's connect that to the uh, length in this spline operator. Now we do have this value, which is the actual length of this spline. After that, we do have this segments which will read out the number of segments within our spline. In our case, we do have a single spline or a single segment. So it will read out the number, well, maybe zero, I think, because it will start counting from zero up. So yes, indeed, it's zero because we only have one spline. So the last thing is the tangent. And this tangent is actually very cool. It's gonna, you know, it's just gonna give us the tangent of this sphere when it travels along the spline. So it's gonna give us a different value, you know, each time we change this offset value, if that makes any sense. So it's a vector value, by the way. So let's add a result node. And let's change the data type from real to a vector. Now let's connect the tangent. Now, it's given us in the Y number one. Now, when we go back to the spline operator and this offset, let's change this value. Now we do have this, this value. It's just the tangent of the sphere. 
so we do have this one spline. So let me just add another object containing more than one spline, obviously. And that is maybe the text. Yes, it's a great example of a multiple spline object. So let me just hide this flower for a minute and just let Let's grab this text and put it into Expresso, extract the object, connect it to the spline operator instead of this flower object. Now in the segments, notice that it read out number five because we have five splines on this text. Now when we go back to the spline operator, when we change this offset value, notice that the sphere is traveling along the T ladder only. All right, we do have other input and that is the segment. And this segment is gonna be available here in the attributes manager. It will allow us to jump from one segment to another. So as you noticed, we we are dealing with the letter T. Now when we change this, we will jump to the next segment. So now we are in the letter E. Three is gonna be in the letter X and so on. You'll get the idea. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next.